Uh, one second. I'm sorry. That's no problem. Take your time. Uh -huh. Mr. Bordenero. Present. Mr. Fernandez. Mr. Grady. Mr. Holmes. Here. Mr. Lamaglio. Here. Mr. Paradis. Here. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you. I first want to welcome Raul. He's going to be taking be our new board of finance man here. God help you. But uh, we're a bunch of great guys. We might get a little hot under the collar. Sometimes we all like each other. So welcome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. okay. Uh, public comments. Anybody online that want public comments? Okay. Let's have the approval of December 8th. Regular minutes. Um, could I have a motion for faith, please? I make a motion to approve the December 8th Board of Finance meeting. Minutes. I have a se second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Let's Aye. Do Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Let's do the new business thing here. Um, Jerry, you want to read it for me? Sure. Move to appropriate $2 million of general fund unassigned fund balance to the pension actuarial funding account within the general fund to fund projected pension payouts. Okay, can I have a second for this? Second. Okay, let's have a discussion. Or Mr. Kevin, can tell us about it. Well, this is our, um, unfortunately, our annual discussion we have. We've had a couple more folks. Um, we did have one retirement turned in, person turned in paperwork the end of December, effective January 5th, and uh, we'll be getting paid out in February. We do have another payout of a person who actually retired about a year and a half ago, but had not reached, had reached the vested point, but had not reached the point where he was eligible to be paid out. That point will be reached April 1st. So this helps fund those two payouts. Um, we do also have two others, two police officers who have indicated that they are looking at the program. They have looked at their numbers and are running through some things. So um, depending on what happens there, I may be back to ask for even more money for the payout. The good yeah. news is when we, make, when we make this payout on the person who retired in December, we will be down to eight active members of the plan. So we are working the numbers down. And as interest rates go up, that liability and the ultimate payout goes down. So the last, say, week, two weeks have actually been positive from an interest rate standpoint and therefore favorable from liability and payout standpoint. Okay, maybe uh, Raul, now do you understand what this is about? But since you just started, I mean, have you um, kind of talked to speed about the pension problem we have? Yeah, I, uh, I've heard some, um, I've attended the, the town council meetings. I think uh -huh. it was when asked for the original money, I believe. Um, That's right. And I've been you know. caught up with it. I know we did switch from a pension based to like a 401k based. Right, right. So, so save the money, the pounds of money. Yep. That's right. It's promise made, promise kept. Okay, so anybody else have any other questions? I have a question. Uh, Kevin, um, if the other two go, uh, what is the, the timing for... How, how late it would go and still stay within this year for them to get payouts? They would have to retire by, they would have to retire before uh, June 1st. What happens is the actuaries get the retirement papers and it's the first day of the following month is the calculation. So if they, if we don't have retirements by June 1st, then their effective would be July. So that, that leaves us on hook for another f five months. Yes. Yeah. And, and if those two go, what's the estimate of how much? Uh, those two together would be about three million. So uh, you would be looking at probably, I would be coming back to you in the neighborhood, probably 1.2 to 2 million, somewhere in that range, depending on interest rates. The good news is you do have a strong unassigned fund balance in the general fund. Um, you know, you, you're north of um, $17 million there. 
obviously there's a piece of that you always want to have a good reserve but you do have sufficient funds you actually have sufficient funds in the unassigned fund balance you could pay out all of the eight remaining members wouldn't be ideal but you could and still remain above the 11 percent policy floor um, so the town has built up a strong reserve over the last few years to be able to accommodate that thank you Sounds like we were in South Africa somewhere. <laughs> um, okay, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Aye. Jerry. Aye. Excellent. Number two, Jerry, please. Two million seven hundred seventy-four thousand two hundred fifty-four dollars State Department of Energy and Environmental Protection Grant. For improvements to the Staglio Field and various improvements at Sage Park to the DEEP Athletic Facilities Improvements Grant Account. Can I, just, can, I, can I have a second, please? Can I get a second? Okay. Uh, a discussion. This is a great, great grant. So we have a discussion, comments. Mr. Holmes, this is your baby. Um, well, I'll let Steve talk, but the, the, the grant was written. Okay. It could have been written slightly better. Um, the majority of the money is going to go behind the high school or turfing the high school field, which will be a, a little tricky. given the track is to, um, so I have to work around that. Uh, Steve could talk better about that. Um. We, we managed to get out of putting up a half a million dollar bathroom um, at softball field. Can we use Zoom like the rest of the world, Kevin? Why, why, why do we use this garbage software? Um, well, it sounds, it sounds you know, it sounds if like If everybody can mute, we should, that should avoid the problem. If everybody can just go on mute and then... Um, so for you, Mark, <laughs> there'll be a couple hundred thousand put into brand new lights at Sage at softball and football. Um, those lights are 1990. Uh, we can't get replacement lights um, for those. And then the rest uh, is going to go towards softball. There were promises made from the council that we would accommodate their needs, Title IX, et cetera. Uh, so they're getting a new storage facility and a, and a little shed um, to announce their games and sell candy bars out of. That about sums it up. Woody, you could chime in on more details. Yeah, pretty much what Mark said is uh, spot on. We're gonna start off with the biggest project, which is gonna be the inside of Escoglio. From there, we're going to look into finishing the upgrades to Sage 1 to complete the field improvement project that was done there. With the remaining funds, we're going to try to retrofit and upgrade the lights to LED on Zipidelli, Scalise, and Sage 1. In the remaining funds, I think it's going to be somewhere around 350000 was to try to move the road, but the road came in somewhere around $1.2 million from DPW, um, and that should pretty much take up the majority of the grant if you guys have any questions. I think though, anybody else? Scoreboard is off of the grant now. No, the scoreboard is still in the grant. I, I would really like to see that go to a better place, but it is what it is at this point. That about sums it up, Tim. Yep. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. We can unmute ourselves and take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, okay. This is great. Um, have a discussion. This is just a discussion uh, I decided that this has been really uh, I don't know maybe a thorn in some people's sides I've been 
stop and shop. Some people I've been going to stop and shop. There's people that are not happy about this, but that's okay. About the uh, new port abatement, I gave. Um, I call. I called up, uh, and um, gave my opinion, and they did change the wording uh, on the thing. They did change the word. And what I want, I asked that they put the wording in that um. And if the developers were to apply for some um, tax credits, if they decide to do some affordable housing there, they're entitled to tax credits. And I wanted the word in there that if they do obtain any form of tax credits, that the abatement would be taken away. The developers agreed, town council agreed with that. So that's gonna be in the, in the, um, in the contract now. So I think that's a positive thing to have just to you know, they might not go tax credit, but you could think it's important that I don't, you know, they shouldn't be double dipping if they were to do that. So all sides agreed. So I think that's a positive vote. Um, I think we're gonna, they're also thinking about not giving any more tax abatements to any type of apartment complexes. My, am I correct on that, uh, Mr. Delaney? That's what I was told. They're, they're, yeah, they're, they're, thinking, uh, they're coming up with a proposal which are gonna share with us in February. Am I correct? That's so right. I, um, yeah, Economic Development Director Edge is working first with the Economic uh, Development Commission, then he'll go to the council, and then he will be here in February to talk right. in more detail about the go forward abatement policy. Right, because I, I expressed concern with the Economic Director that I, I personally, and I don't know if anybody else feels that way, I just don't think apartment complexes should get tax abatement. I just that's just my personal opinion, and I guess they tend to agree with it. So they're going to come up with some type of proposal. And he had called me last last week, and he would want to come and just discuss it with us. And I said February would be great. So I think we're in a pot. You know, we're going in the right direction on these tax abatements. I hope so. Anybody else have any opinion on this? I have any a question. Hey, um, go ahead. I, I'm not. Obviously, I'm just trying to get caught up with this. Yeah. But why wasn't this brought on to the town's attention during negotiations? Well, that, you know what? That's the problem I have, and I discussed it. And I also, um, that that's a good question. I think the town people should have an input on these taxes. And I think let's let's wait and hear from the economic director. Uh, I think he's got some input on that. So I don't think we should rush a judgment on it. But yeah, you're right. I think the taxpayers should have a say on these tax abatements. Um, so I did express that concern. Definitely. Should have some. But I also want to send a letter to the Corporation Council. I haven't had a chance to this week. I will this week. I just want to know what the I my and I could be wrong. I read the charter and I could and I was on charter revision commission, so I should know, but I'm gonna read I don't I don't think the the uh, economic commission has the authority to they have the authority to discuss but not negotiate. I think it comes with the um, council. So I just I think it's a little murky, and I think we should tighten that up. And I and I'm gonna send a, an email to corporation council and suggest that we should tighten that up a little bit. I, I I just don't feel it. I know they're trying to get businesses, and I welcome that. But I think when it comes to negotiating tax abatements. I feel that the council and the board of finance should be involved. Uh, the council, basically, maybe the board of finance, is a type of advisory level or as a consultant that they should consult with us. Even though we don't have a vote, I think we should have some type of say in it. Um, you know, some suggestions or something with the council on these tax abatements. So I, I think moving forward, we might operate at a different level. I hope. I, I talked to the mayor at his council meeting. He seemed to agree that maybe we can do things a little different. So I think February we'll find out what we can do and maybe some opinion from the Corporation Council too. That would be fantastic. That's just my opinion. Else. I think we got to keep in mind too that we were starting at a zero point as far as taxes went on that property. It was just abandoned garbage at the time. So right, yeah, no, I'm no not matter, criticizing. No which way you spin it, it's 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 a positive. It's going to bring in business. I looked at the um, the breakdown of the uh, year by year. And you're talking about millions of dollars in that amount of time coming into the town and taxes that otherwise just wouldn't have been there. You add in the vehicles that are going to be parked there in the residential area, the business is going to bring in. You got to keep all the positives in mind. 
Oh, it's, I it's, agree. It's complicated. There's, you, you know, they got $60 million in in the past how many years? You, you can't argue with that. And it's all due to the tax abatements. Wait, 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 wait. Let's get this. Let's back this up. Are you saying that we got $60 million on the books or $60 million coming in? In total, in developments. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. You have to wait, wait, wait. You have to be specific, though. Because well, we I have to be. Specific. No, no, no. Let's be specific. Are we getting. No, no. Are we? Are we? Are you saying that we're getting six? No, let me rephrase this. Are you saying that we're going to get dollars? No, you. You know, I'm talking in. about sixty million dollars in additional taxing. No, no, the, no, no, not taxes. I'm talking about the grand list. Let's be specific. Are you saying that we're we have already gotten sixty million dollars? No, on the total, grand list total or in, pro, total in progress. progress. Yes, okay, I agree with in you. Progress. That's coming in. Yes, yes, that's approximately two million dollars in revenue eventually. Am I correct, Mister uh, Delaney? Eventually, as planned, as planned, yes. Yep. I agree with you 100%. You are absolutely that we do have, if these projects go under where it should be approximately 60 million, right, Mr. Delaney? Yes. Okay. But I also heard the third project, he wants zero, right? I mean, am I correct? I mean, that's what I heard that he doesn't want to pay any taxes for 10 years, right? Well, nobody but wants to pay any taxes. I mean, yeah, but I mean, well, that's what he wants. <laughs> Sam, may I, may I clarify something from from yeah. your earlier comment? Just just to kind of have it on the on the record, the Economic Development Commission um, recommends to the council, but every tax abatement has to be approved by the council. Right. So those are um, no, it, you're it's right. A, it's a part of our audit process. It's part of our CAFR and disclosed there. So um, you had mentioned earlier that it should be reviewed and approved. The council does approve no, any right. abatement. Oh, so that's, I just that's make sure I, no, no, no. That's what I meant. The council proves it. What I think it's a little murky that the, that the commission negotiates it and then brings it to the council. I think the council should negotiate it, and maybe we should be put in as an advisory level. I just don't. I don't think it's the position of of appointed appointed people to negotiate tax abatements. Is that I, I just it's just a fundamental belief I have. I could be totally wrong, but I'd rather have corporation council. I think it's a little murky. I think that. That, you know the, the um, uh, commission, the economic commission. I get the impression they negotiate, and I could be wrong. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm not saying I'm totally 100% right, but I, I want an understanding how how these tax abatements come up. They approach the economic commission and says, "Hey, listen, you know, I'm putting up a bill that I need 10% or 15% or whatever," and then they negotiate. Do they call up the council or the mayor or the town manager and says, "Hey, these guys are looking for 15%," or do they make Commitment, like a, a commitment, and say, you know, I've got to talk to the council. I mean, is there some type of level of communication between everybody? And I just get the impression that, and I could be wrong, but I get the impression there isn't that communication that should have happened. And I'm not saying that I'm right 100%, but that's just my impression I get. And I just want to clarify that with the Corporation Council, make sure everybody, you know, make sure everybody on it, up and up. That's what Wait, and, and I can talk with the processes. Yeah, I, I can have yeah, Chris. I can have Chris elaborate next month on exactly yeah, how saying. that works. Yeah, and he said he will. I mean, we've had a number of discussion with Chris, and I, and he understands my he understands what I was saying. So he's going to bring in a whole packet, and we're going to discuss it. And I just want to just see, you know, see what the charter says. I mean, that's it. That's all I want. I mean, I, I basically, I just want some clarification. That's what I want. But other than that, I mean, it is what. I understand we, we you know we got to give tax abatements for businesses to come in town. I understand. But I think there should be a limit on we can give people. That's that's what I feel. I could you know it's just my anything else on this? Okay, good. I got another question before we adjourn. Well, two statements. One, can we have our meetings at, at the Board of Education next month? Seriously. I mean, whoever wants to come, come. But this Zoom thing is just like, I don't know. What do you think, Mr. Holmes? Do you agree? Mr. Holmes, I'll use yourself. I, I, I hate Zoom, and then we don't even use Zoom. Zoom is an upgrade from this. That's right. Um, sorry, Kevin. Um, it, and Zoom is free, by the way, guys. Uh, no, I, I, I want to meet in person. Desperately. Yeah, and, I, and, and everybody agrees. I mean, whoever doesn't feel comfortable, you can either call in or do this video thing in but i think i think we should just you know i 
they meet in person, whoever feels comfortable. I'm not requiring anybody to come. If you feel comfortable, come. If you don't, just call in or do video. I mean, is that okay? Yeah. Is that okay? I, I, I'd like to have the ability to call in if I yes, if definitely. I choose. Yes, yeah. that's what I'm saying. It's just the people that want to meet face to face. Let's just meet, and Mr. Delaney will try to figure out. We can, uh, Dana will probably call in. Jerry will call in. Sal, how do you feel about it? Tim, Raul, you know, stay hey, with I'm same. okay with in person. Okay, Sal, Tim. Sam, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You're okay, you Sal? Yeah, I lost you, but I can hear you. Tim? I'm good with it. Okay. Raul? So am I. Yeah, I'm good with it okay. as well. So, I mean, that Dana, you could call in. Jerry, whoever wants to call in, and we can still offer this video, right? I mean, right, Mr. Delaney? Yep. Okay, so, I mean, we'll give everybody the option, but at least some, some of us can meet in person. That's good? Okay. And uh, Mr. Delaney, one more question. What's going on with the um, building commission on this uh, wrapping of the pipes? You hear anything? I mean, the study, whatever they, the air quality study, you hear anything on this? Um, the study is supposed to be completed in the next couple of weeks. There's kind of, this is the, I'll call it the tie-breaking consultant. There have been numerous consultants as to whether the, whether the uh, ductwork needs to be wrapped or whether it just needs to be painted every couple of years. So hopefully we will have our results shortly and hopefully from there figure out what that last step is to ideally close out the high school project and then get in the pipeline for audit and get our final approximately $3 million back from the state. Sounds good. What's the building commission working on? I mean, we haven't gotten a report for them from, I don't know, a long time. Jerry, wasn't it a long time? A long time. Yeah. And went to, you know what they're working on? You know what they're working on, Mr. Delaney? I do not. I believe they have a meeting Thursday. I could be mistaken, but I believe they have one Thursday. I, I do not know what they're working on. I know COVID has kind of impaired some of the progress that they have. Weren't we make. supposed to be working on something in the police department or something? Am I, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I'm not sure. Fresh my mind. Wasn't there something going on there? Uh, the locker rooms not, or something? I don't know. Did it pass? No, I mean, I I'm not remember. familiar with that. They were working on the new wash bay. Um, so they're yeah. trying to decide some of that. Um, and they were also working on the HVAC program for the three elementary schools, the air quality and, and replacement of the old HVAC systems at each of the schools. Um, I'm sure they have other stuff on the agenda that I'm just not aware of, but those were two big things that I know. Um, one, you've approved the funding. The funding is sitting there, which is the highway wash bay. The other is a multi-million dollar project to renovate, like I said, the HVAC systems at all three elementary schools. Okay, I skipped the finance to report because I wanted that last, and then we'll just close up. Go ahead, Kevin. Give us, give us. Some... Uh, I will be quick and then open it up for any questions you might have. Um, I'll just highlight a couple of things. Tax collections do remain strong. Um, we, because the tax office is currently closed to walk in, um, we had a fair number of folks who moved in the end of December rather than potentially early January. Uh, payouts and uh, so now we've um, so we're doing we're doing pretty well there. The collection rate is ahead of prior year at this point, and uh, January will be the final major hurdle if we can get past that. Um, the other thing I'll draw your attention to is we, you know we continue to have some risks, and I think many of them are continuing to materialize as as we would have expected. Um, interest rates have have not bounced back. No surprise there. Um, we're hovering very low, and so I, I think that's a clear miss to the budget this year. Um, the proposal of not issuing bonds this year will come with the consequence of not having bond premium, which was embedded in the budget at $250,000 this year. So I would put that at, at a high level of risk if there's no bonding done in June. Um, v &A revenue continues to face headwinds. Um, and then... You know, we continue to see some of the other items lower on the scale. We have some risk with legal, a few lawsuits, planning and zoning, and, and a couple of others that are out there. So that may be a little bit higher. As we talked about pension payouts earlier, and then the big unknown of fall and winter. Um, you know, you can see on page one, we're largely in line with where we were last year in terms of storm-related overtime. We're, we're a few hundred dollars below this point last year. A lot of this has to do less with the severity of storms and more with the timing. 
Um, last year we did we did pretty well from this point on. The year before we did even better. But um, you know, I, I can tell you that there was, I think it was three years ago, we had a number of Sunday ice storms, and that will just crush the budget because you're looking at you know time and a half and double time, depending on holidays. So overall, I, I think we're in a pretty good position. And uh, we continue to monitor things closely. The only other thing I'll bring up to you is the budget continues to move along. You obviously, I sent the email out today with the superintendent's budget proposal. As a reminder, the Board of Ed will weigh in and, and submit what the actual Board of Ed budget is. So that is not necessarily the, the final budget from the Board of Education. It's the superintendent's uh, submission for the board review. Um, the town budget, we're wrapping up calls on Thursday, and then we'll start to pull things together. Grand list is coming together. We're starting to get some early indications, uh, but again, they're early. And then obviously the legislature is meeting and we'll see where that goes as far as uh, aid to the state, to the town and, and other things. With that, I'll open up to any questions. I have a question. Can you put a dollar amount on the VNA's headwind, please? I mean, right now I would say 300, but it could be, in my opinion, as high as 450. That's revenue. Um, you know, expenses, I think, could come in slightly favorable. Are you, are you saying that's the shortfall or that's? That's the shortfall. Okay. Sorry, yeah. So 300 to 450 is the range we're looking at. Yeah, at this point. What was yeah. last year's so shortfall? What was last year's uh, I can't remember. I don't have it in I front of me. It was I right think around they the half a million, wasn't it? Well, that was the uh, that was the total shortfall. The revenue shortfall against the million dollars, I believe, was a couple of hundred thousand. Okay. And we had nobody on that proposal. Nobody applied. Nobody did it. Nobody came. Nobody responded. Nobody responded to the quality Is that right? audit. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that so means it's sort of up to us then to take the first action. It is um, the town manager and the director of the VNA have been talking. So, uh, you know, more to come as the budget submission comes in, and then uh, <laughs> um, we'll go from there. No, I you know what I got to give. They have been talking. I talked to town manager and. You know, all, all kidding aside, we've been hard with the DNA director, but she's been talking, so she might see some realities. So let's let's listen with an open mind, I guess. Well, I have a question, but it's not really to Kevin. It's on the uh, Board of Education uh, documents that you sent to us. Mm -hmm. um, the second page, and maybe Sal, if you're going to be our liaison, maybe um, maybe you can address this. I'm looking at um, their list of grants, and I'm seeing on their um, their education stabilization fund monies, uh, which still has 134,000 left over. In their coronavirus relief funds, which was budgeted at four hundred forty-four thousand six seventy-five, and all of it is yet to be spent. Um, my, I, I guess I have a couple questions. Uh, what is the period that they can spend those monies within, and still be um, legal expenditures? Um, and then I have a separate one on on excess costs, which um, maybe Kevin can uh, address too. Um, you know, but my concern with those other two is if there's a certain period of performance, which there usually is with the grants, I just want to make sure that we're not going to go past that and not have charged anything. Um, you know, and lose the money uh, or end up with question costs afterwards. Uh, I'm not I, sure I can okay, I can back. address I can address at least part of those if you want. Go ahead. Um, the the 444,000 coronavirus relief we just received word out from uh, through OPM but from the US government that they're going to allow expenditures through December 31st 2021. So we do have additional time to run those out. 
Um, I can tell you the 444,000 included several items. One of the big items that the Board of Ed put in for, and um, we are definitely going to spend the money, was an air quality study of all five schools. It was going to cost about $190,000. It was approved by the council, uh, I'm going to say four or five months ago. Um, the study is almost completed, and it was basically evaluating against the state standards set um, and, and figuring out where we stand with all five schools. There's, there's a little less focus on the high school just because of how new and, and the quality of that school is, but especially the other four. So that's about $190,000 of that 444. And when that comes back in, that would come back actually onto um, the town side because it was spent from Department 61. Um, there's a balance of other items, transportation in several other areas. The towns were to a large extent told this is these are the buckets you have. And so they fit into those buckets. I think to a certain extent, you're also dealing with um, costs have been incurred and may be moved into some of those grants. Right now, I think they're trying to make sure they take care of the items. And you, you may see some journal entries to move them around so that they're uh, more appropriately put into those when they're completed. Um, and then I think there was, I forgot your other one was, uh, sorry, the second one. It, it was uh, <clears throat> the two right together, education stabilization fund and the Corona relief funds. Yeah. The education yeah. stabilization, that was the first one that came out. That was the ECIA money, I think it was. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that one, I know they spent money against it. Uh, I think it. I can follow up with Ashley, but I think that's more of a reporting area there because they spent well beyond that money in advance and had to uh, document that to the State Department of Education in order to receive the money. So, Yeah, my, my concern there is, is that that's generally how it works. So that means that money is sitting in their budget expenditures at this point, uh, most likely, and therefore has to be moved out, um, which affects our looking at their budget in terms of where, where it really stands. So anything that has to be moved out to be charged against the grants, um, you know, like that one, um, they should really do that um, once it's approved. You know, I, you know if, if they're waiting for approval, that's, that's different. Yep. Um, my last question, um, the last line on their uh, BOE grants report is the excess cost money. And that's showing $850,000 balance budgeted and current balance. I thought we had changed things so that they were doing, it, you know, if you look at the, the previous page, he says that the Christian account is negative because they haven't applied the excess cost grant receipts yet. But yet they've got excess cost grant money in a separate account. I thought we were doing a new thing. Or did we go to this? I'm not sure what they're doing. I'll have to follow up with them and find out. Okay, because didn't didn't we change the budget a while back to yep. um, and they were doing their budget net, right? They were. Yep. So I mean, I don't I guess I don't understand why they have a bank of eight hundred thousand dollars in excess cost funds at this point. Yep. That would that would be my question. Yep. You know, that if we're if we're budgeting net, why why do they still have that bank? Because the whole purpose of the excess cost grant is to current fund your special ed costs. So revenue and expenditure hits in the same year. There yep. really should never be a balance in, in, in that grant account. Yep. Okay, that, that was my last question. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else have any questions about anything? No? Yeah, I, I have, I have a question. Mr. Simons has been sitting on here and I'm wondering why he was on. <laughs> Because he likes to listen to them. He's, he's oh, a taxpayer really? and a citizen. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Simon, do you want I'm just 
Just watching to see what's going on. <laughs> Get ready to get into budget time, you know? Jimmy, you need a hobby, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I got plenty of those. <laughs> look pretty sharp for those small dog trucks, huh? I wouldn't say they're small, but compared to right? I think we lost you scared of office, You did. you scared of No. Is it time for a motion to adjourn? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I said, hold on, Mr. Simon, are you on? Okay, let's have a motion to adjourn. Yeah, I'm on. No, 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 no. Don't, right. don't hang up yet. Go ahead. Sam, after you adjourn, can you and Kevin stay on for just one quick minute? Yeah. yeah. Did we get our police cruisers, all our cruisers yet, Mr. Simons? The police cruisers that were ordered in the current but fiscal year have not come in, and you won't see those for another month and a half to two months. Okay, but we're still good with the cars, right? We, <laughs> we are, yes, okay. we're on track with the cars at this point. All right, sounds good. Okay, then. We'll probably get some more, a couple more coming in for next budget, right? So we we now have caught up primarily with the uh, backlog of police cruisers. So now we'll be just maintaining what we have before. Uh, forward. Sounds good to me. Okay, let's have a motion to adjourn. Somebody give me a motion to adjourn. Yeah, I motion to adjourn. How about a second? A second. Get it. Okay, then. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. All right, we'll see you guys at the next meeting in February. All right, take All right, care. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>